Hey Pete. <laughs> Hi everyone, we are live. We're gonna paint our craft kit of the month, our home sweet home, a little square frame sign. Pete says hello. Hi Pete. Hey buddy. <laughs> See a little, little cute nose under here. <laughs> All right, let me put my apron on. So I've got my paint apron on, um, and I need to grab a cup of water for brushes. And then I think I'll have everything I need. So grab your stuff if you're gonna paint with me, make sure you got everything ready, and we'll get started. If this is the first time you have painted with me, welcome to my little craft table area. Um, this is my little personal craft room in my house. Um, plus, outside the house, we have our big old workshop where we have all of our machines. And that's where kind of the business happens, right? For Julie's Woodcrafts and my husband's business, Monster Arcades. Um, but this is kind of my little corner of the house that's my little personal craft room so this is everything you got in your craft kit of the month plus you got little paint pouches i don't have the paint pouches because i have the paint bottles um but go ahead and get out all your stuff but we're going to start by painting the square backer so we'll kind of just want to get everything off of it and out of the way i am going to need to blow my nose in a minute i'm all sniffly again so I'm sniffly every time I try to do a paint. That's not cute, huh? <laughs> also, I can see you can see my pants in the video. Nice, nice little cactus pants. These are my pajama pants. Joys of working at home. Business up top. Pajama pants on the bottom. All right, so let's do it. Drink of choice is coffee with a couple marshmallows because it's Friday and I wanted to treat myself. Happy St. Patty's Day, by the way. Look, I got little green earrings on. Mm -mm. I'm almost done with that coffee though, so like intermission, I might need to make another coffee, just being honest. Slept late today, so I had a crazy busy week. Um, so I'm happy it's the weekend. All right, grab out your gray paint pouch. It is Rainy Day Gray from Anita's Acrylic Craft Paint. Squeeze yourself some onto here. You don't have to worry about going all the way to the edges because you know that frame's going to cover up the edge, but we'll get pretty close just to be sure. But squeeze yourself some gray. And then you're going to use your wood handled foam brush. That one. Oh, this might sound silly, but I just love the way this craft paint smells. I squeeze it out. I'm like, hmm, smells good. Um, we are going to do the dry brush technique with some white paint on top of this gray. So it's actually okay if it's not a really um, thick paint job because it'll just kind of add to the look that the dry brushing helps create. But I'll probably do two coats anyways because because I just can't help myself. I probably should have picked a shirt that didn't have such baggy sleeves. 
I'm gonna end up with gray paint in my armpits, I'm pretty sure. So, happy Friday. Of course, if you're watching this on a rewatch, that doesn't apply to you. But for me, I'm feeling pretty good. It's Friday. I've got a few things out. Work-wise, I need to knock out, make some progress on some orders and things like that, and plans for upcoming shows and working our way through some of those things to get ready for shows, cutting some things but not too big of a to-do list today, which is nice. All right, all covered. And I'm just gonna smooth it out because there's some places where it's real thick because I squeezed too much on like I always do. Always, always squeeze too much on. When you're squeezing it on there, it doesn't look like it's going to be too much. In fact, it looks like it's not going to be enough. But you think if there's many things that I've painted, it would be better at that part of it. But to be honest, we don't usually use craft paint on big surfaces, right? In the workshop for orders and things like that. Um, like if I were painting this right in the workshop for an order, why we either roll paint it with an exterior house paint, which is what we typically would do 98% of the time. Um, the only other thing we might do is we might spray paint it. Um, but typically these big surfaces like our big um, circle backers and those sort of things in the states that we're doing now, we'll roll paint them with an exterior house paint and we'll, you know, paint a few at a time. So I don't normally paint large surfaces with craft paint, but we do it for the craft kit of the month because this is, you know, the perfect way to just paint one at home at your kitchen table or your craft room or wherever you're painting it, right? So this is the perfect way to do it for the craft kit of the month. All right, y'all, I might just only do one coat. I mean, seriously, this gray is covering beautifully. And even if, like I said, if it looks a little splotchy, like thin in some areas and not as thick in other areas. We're gonna dry brush it with the white that you got. So, I mean, it's it's a different look anyways. So let me hold off on this before I decide 100%. I'm not gonna do a second coat. I'm not gonna wash that brush out yet. And um, I'm gonna set this to the side. There we go. Now, let's work on the frame. We'll get the big pieces out of the way. So the frame is going to be black, just like the words Home Sweet Home are gonna be black, and then the little leaf is gonna be green. And I've got a sponge wedge here for you to paint this. Um, or if you've got from previous craft kit of the month, you can always use this to rinse this out, dry it off and use this one as well. Um, if you prefer that one, but it's really not bad. I like these little sponges. So get out your black paint pouch, squeeze some out on whatever surface you've got that you can squeeze it out on. Uh oh, there we go. It should be enough. I was hoping so I have to head out to the workshop and get get into the rest of my paint supply. I'm using the thick end on this one because we are covering a big surface. But you'll see, it goes on so smooth with these little wedges. And 
and then we will paint the inside edge and the outside edge of the frame too. Uh, excuse me with the sniffles. Now with the black, I will end up doing two coats. It needs it. So now I'm going to go ahead and paint the inside. So I'm just going to run that sponge along the inside. The inside is a little bit rougher because obviously it's the inside of this material that we're cutting. So it's not as smooth to paint as the front of the frame. So that one, you know, you might have to go over it a couple of times. But that's typical with any material. All right, now, actually I'm wondering, that would make it easier. Here we go, so I'm gonna turn it up so that I can Get the inside edge this way. And if it kind of oozes onto the back, just wipe it off. Doesn't matter, the back of that frame is going to be glued down. And when I turned it up, then I see a couple spots I missed there. Yeah, I'm exactly one week away from a setup day for my first show of the year. It's a smaller show, but here in Cartersville that I have supported for quite a few years because it is a great show. Um, it's different than the other ones I normally do. It's called Northwest Georgia Women's Expo. So it's not just like a typical arts and crafts show. It's also got a lot of vendors, women specific vendors. So a lot of like health related vendors, um, self defense type vendors, but also like um, housing repair sort of vendors too, right? Like, so they'll have vendors as well. Um, but if they do like um, different sorts of screening too, like medical screenings and stuff, like free ones, which is great to be able to get that. Plus there will be other you know, vendors similar to me, right? Um, jewelry and purses. And I'm sure there will be some um, like back product type things, candles, stuff like that. All right, now I see more spots I missed. But anyway, so it's called Northwest Georgia Women's Expo. Google it, check it out on Facebook. Um, it is just March 25th. Yeah, March 25th, it's a Saturday, nine to three, I think. So it's just Saturday, it's not a whole weekend, but it's at the Clarence Brown Conference Center in Cartersville. And um, all right, now I'm painting the outside edge. It's a great little show, totally worth coming up to. Um, I say up to like, if you're down in Marietta, where I used to live. 
um, cause it's right off of the highway 20 exit on I-75. So it's real easy to get to. You can come down to it if you're living up in Calhoun, Dalton, Chattanooga even, cause it's really only about like an hour drive from Chattanooga. So it is a great event and we would love to have you there. I'll actually be giving away tickets this week on the Facebook page. So make sure you check there for some free tickets. But then the following weekend is like one of my biggest shows. Well, it'll, it's always been my biggest show of the spring. Sometimes it's my biggest show of the year. Um, Flower Town Festival in Somerville, South Carolina. It's just outside of Charleston, so it's a beautiful area too. In Somerville, South Carolina is a great little town. Um, we love going to it just so we get to go back to Somerville. Like we've got our favorite little restaurants and things there and coffee shops and all that that we like because I've been going so many years. Okay, so I am done with painting the insides and the outsides. Of course, you got paint all over your fingers. Make sure I went over the edge here so I need to like smooth out a little bit of the goopiness there. Okay. So, I'm going to set this over here to dry. I will want to do a second coat on the frame. Just be careful wherever you set it to dry because we painted the edges. There's black paint like all over. So wherever you set it, you might actually get some paint. Oh, wait, look at that. I'm going to leave it here because I just have warts to paint. I'll paint them right in here. There you go. There's a little hack for you. Let it dry right there. Now we're going to grab our home sweet home pieces because they are black as well. Um, so the Flower Town Festival in Somerville, South Carolina is Friday, March 31st, and then Saturday and Sunday, April 1st and 2nd um, at the big park, and I don't know the name of the park, but it's, I mean, it's the park like right off of downtown Somerville. Um, and it's such a huge show, you can't miss it. Like, if you were to drive into Somerville any of those three days, no problem. You'll see. Park anywhere in Somerville. You might have to walk a while to get to the park because, I mean, there's so many people. Parking is at a minimum. But you'll see signs for, like, pay lots and stuff like that or find a spot anywhere you can. There's so many vendors and it's always beautiful because it's in this beautiful park and usually the azaleas are blooming and um, it's a great show with some really great vendors. What I love about that show is people come out and support regardless of the weather. It could be raining, people will still come and shop. Which reminds me, I need to buy more bags. <laughs> Because when it's raining, I make sure I have bags for people to put their stuff in because they're buying unpainted pieces and stuff. They don't need to be getting wet until after they've painted them and sealed them. All right, now let's get our sweet. Not that it's necessary to paint them in the order you're going to put them on, but just feels right, right? Like I should be painting home, sweet home. I love this sign. I don't even remember what inspired me to start doing square signs. You know, I must have seen something somewhere that made me think of it, but I started out like just over a year ago, I was doing the square initials. So it's the back or the frame, and then I would just have an initial in it. Um, and those were fairly popular, uh, and I think they're beautiful. But, you know, over the years, I've seen that initials aren't 
as popular as they were. So, you know, we're looking at offering different things than just an initial inside of it. Somehow this year I was just like, I think we should do more square framed stuff, but you know, not initials. And I am loving these square framed signs. They look great on a door. I think, you know, any, cause the majority of doors either don't have windows or they have square or rectangle framed windows. So it kind of fits with that. The only thing I, I have not tried them on is the windows with the big oval like center frame. I'm not a hundred percent sure how it would look on that. I like circular and oval things on doors with an oval window. Of course, it's your door, so it's totally whatever you want. Um, but the great thing about these square frame signs too is it does not have to be a door hanger. Like this home sweet home would look great in your entryway or put it on like a porch. Like I've got a screen porch on the back of my house, so I'm gonna hang this one. We have like a little seating area and a TV on the wall. I think I'm gonna just hang it like to the right of the TV on the back of the house. Because I already have a door hanger that says, welcome. Just kidding, go away. <laughs> All right, now let's do the second coat on our black frame. We probably won't need to second coat the words that this frame be in a big surface like that. Definitely looks patchy in some areas. So I'm gonna definitely second coat the frame. This would also make a fabulous gift because people can use it in so many places, so many ways, but like housewarming gift, birthday gift, Wedding gift, totally. Huh. I just realized apparently I'm painting the sides. I totally missed this bottom side here. So I'm gonna do this really quick. I only did three of the four edges, other edges. <laughs> this was the one that was sitting on the table the whole time, so I didn't notice. <laughs> or that one, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Apparently, I can't talk and paint. <laughs> that's gonna be a problem for me, seeing as how that's like a little bit, of, you know, part of my business model. The whole talking and painting thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will get the other side and then flip it around. I missed two whole sides and I'm like, yay me, I'm done. Look at that. All right, and so I know that 1130 on a Friday was a totally awkward time to do a live paint. So I imagine a lot of y'all will be watching this on the replay. Um, so you can always say hi. Um, let me know how you're doing or if you have any questions as you're painting. And then also, I haven't even posted about it in the group yet or on my page or anything. Um, I'm just kind of silently been doing this in the background, but I've been curating my personal, uh, well not personal, my Julie's Woodcrafts um, YouTube channel. So all of these live paints now um, are getting added to the YouTube channel. So anyone we've done before is there. Plus any of the ones besides like just the little crack of the month ones, you know, sometimes I've come on and like tied a bow or I painted a cow, did dry brushing technique and like a few other little things here and there, a little like DIY paint um, tutorials. So they're all up there. 
I will link about it in the, <clears throat> I'll post about it in the page or the group at some point, but I just kind of wanted to have like a good number of videos uploaded there before I did. But if you just look up Julie's Woodcrafts on YouTube, you will find it. So I'm pretty excited about that. That way I think it'll be easier <clears throat> for people, especially because I've done so many of these now, because we're like almost at the two year mark of me having done the craft kit of the months, right? So when people buy something that was um, a craft kit of the month from, you know, a year and a half ago or whatever, I'm be like, oh, I have a live paint video for that if you want to check it out. Um, and just much easier to direct them to the YouTube channel than them trying to find it way back amongst all the like Facebook posts and stuff too. So that's the idea that all my little DIY videos will be there in one place on the YouTube channel. So anytime you buy one of my DIY things, you can go check out the YouTube channel and see if I've got a live paint for it or live paint for something similar to it. Um, or if you're looking how to like tie bows and things like that, you know, a lot of my door hangers include a bow. This one's gonna include a bow, a very simple bow. But, so a lot of my videos have that. All right, sorry, I'm sidetracked because I'm looking at the home sweet home trying to see if I need any touch-ups anywhere, if I missed any spots. But I don't think I did. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, so we are gonna need to move all this stuff out of here because we're gonna dry brush on the gray backer. So find a little spot. You can relocate this stuff to for a second. Oh, before I do that, duh, we gotta do the green leaf. Of course. So grab out your little pouch of green paint. The green paint is um, Anita's again, but it's called Lily Pad. I love it. It's a great green. It gets a very springy green to me. Light and bright. All right, and I am not going to be doing a second coat on the gray. I think it looks awesome as is. So I'm going to go ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. Squeeze out as much paint of this as I can. It just cleans up better if you put it in the water and it's been squeezed out. So I'm just sticking in my paint water cup there so then I'll be able to reuse that. Grab out one more of your sponges here. We're gonna do our green paint. And it's definitely not going to take a lot, so just squeeze on a little bit of your lily pad green. And I just dab it on, especially if you're the first time doing this with me. I want to make sure you know my techniques. Um, I like doing this little dab on procedure because if you try to wipe all these little edges, catch the paint and you end up with a lot of globs of paint in the insides of the cutouts and all of that. So any of these smaller pieces or ones with like a lot of cutouts, I always dab the paint on instead of like wiping it on. Like I did when we painted the frame, right? Like obviously that's a big flat surface. So I was just wiping the paint on there. because my goal with this is I'm just painting the tops. I wanna keep the edge with that dark brown or black look. It just really gives it like a nice finished look. It's the look it gets for being cut on the laser. Well, come on laptop. There we go. Um, but it just, it gives it a nice, Kind of makes it look more 3D too, like you notice it's raised, right? It's 
not like a vinyl or something cut out on it, but you realize it's actually like a 3D wood piece. All right, so I'm going back over it, just kind of like with an immediate second coat here. Spots that you want to brighten up, put a little more green on, do it. I think that is pretty good. I think we're looking pretty good and they're adorable. I just love this little detail, like it's the small little things that do it for me. I don't, I mean, you can look through my, obviously, my whole repertoire that I make. I don't, I like a little simpler look, but with some small, fun details. So it's not going to be overwhelming with lots of flowers and lots of leaves and bunnies and hearts and whatever, right? But small little details here and there. Definitely love it. All right. I'm gonna leave this here, um, just in case I see a spot once it starts to dry that I wanna touch up with a little more green paint. Let me get that out of the way. And now we're grabbing out our gray backer and the metal handled brush you got, right? So we can dry brush. It's got this little, um, what do you call it? little bristles there you go <laughs> the bristles um, are very they're kind of tough right they're hard so you're not going to get like a really smooth paint job which is what we want we don't want the smooth paint job because we are trying to just dry brush it. So get out your white paint. All right, there we go. You're gonna use very little white. If you have not dry brushed with us before, it is one of my favorite techniques. All right, so got my little blob of white paint here. I am going to get some on the end, right, obviously. But then I am going to dab off as much of that as I can so that when you're done, it looks like there's, you know, just a very light coating of paint on the end. You'd rather with dry brush, if you haven't done dry brush with this before, the idea is always to take off as much paint as you can. You'd rather have not enough paint so you can come back um, and add more instead of the other way around. And then you're just gonna vary it with a very light hand. Just straight lines across. And I know my first coat is super light. You're not even gonna see that. It looks like I'm doing nothing. <laughs> the video doesn't pick up on the faint white, like dry brushing very well. But I just drag it across with a really light hand. Some places are gonna be thicker than others. And that's the idea. So you get a little more and then I dab off as much as I can. Hopefully now it's enough of a fact that you can kind of see it showing up on the video that the camera can catch the colors, I guess I should say. I 
All right, let me try to give you a little bit of a close up. Yeah, you could definitely tell on the video, good. So that's the idea. Um, you can always get like a visual of what it's gonna look like if you wanna kind of hold the black frame over it. Decide if you wanna do more or less. I think I want a little bit more, but like very light lines. So I tried to dab off a bunch. Kind of pick some spots here. And, and then we're gonna have the words too. So it's not like this is all gonna be open, right? The words and stuff are gonna cover some of this. But that is dry brushing. Dry brushing is fun too, because it can add like, if you wanna add just a small pop of color, this would be a great place. Like if you've got a turquoise you love, something like this, you could always dry brush that onto it. And it just adds like a small little pop of color. Um, all right, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I, I like how it looks, I'm not gonna add any more. So I am going to wash my brush off there. I'm gonna check my green here. See if, yeah, I think I'm gonna, just a couple spots. So I just love this green and I like it being very bright and vibrant. So I'm gonna do it again. Right, so now I will be done with that one. Have you really crafted if your hands aren't covered in paint? I don't think so. All right, so hopefully our frame is dry. Dry enough to glue it on, let me check. Yeah, I just got like a couple little wet spots um, that we can always we can work around that. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on because one of the last things we're gonna do other than do the bow is I do wanna paint that edge there of the frame, I mean, I'm sorry, of the backer. I'm gonna paint that black as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on. So let's flip it over, I'm gonna move Okay, so grab out your glue pouch. This is a good time where um, you can cut the corner of your glue pouch, just give it a really small opening, and then you can kind of use it like it's um, a glue bottle, like I'm about to use here. Helps if I've opened it first, huh? Let's set this down and get ourselves ready for gluing. But I am trying to be a little bit careful with it because it is still a little wet in some spots. You don't want to deal with it wet. My um, advice is always grab out a hair dryer, put it on a low or medium heat, and that will speed up the drying process a lot. This is the glue you always get in your craft kit of the month. We've been using this for years. It is fabulous. We love it. So it's a good quality interior exterior water resistant glue we use it on everything whether it's going indoors or outdoors i like to be thorough all right so now i'm going to carefully flip this over and i'm going to squeeze my glue on it which you can do straight out of your pouch The glue will obviously spread out when we push it down. So you don't have to go real thick because you don't want it squeezing out the edges. All right, so I have glued all of this. I'm going to flip it over. 
just line it up here. There's holes on top to line it up with. Another thing I love about using wood glue instead of hot glue is, you know, if you use hot glue, you're just, you're like on borrowed time. Before that stuff dries and it sticks and you're done. There's no sliding it around to get it in the right place. None of that. So I like that wood glue it gives me a little bit more time. There we go. Feeling good about the placement there. All right. Um, on the off chance that it's not completely sticking down every way, you might want to put something heavy on the corners, like, you know, soup cans, books. In my cases, we always use full paint bottles, but mine's sticking just fine. It's not, not have any issues with that. If you do need to stick it down, that's where you definitely want to grab out a hairdryer real quick or stick it in front of a little space heater, but make sure that this paint is dry before you set something heavy on it to hold it down right so if you have that issue make sure your frame is dry and then put something heavy on the corners and you can wait too this wood glue takes like a half hour to set so you've got some time you know it's not like oh my gosh let me go grab a soup can and stick it on the corners real quick give yourself a minute get it dry and then put something heavy just to hold it down if you need to but like I said, mine's making contact in all parts, so it's not an issue. All right, now let's grab out the other pieces we're gonna be gluing on and decide how we wanna glue them on. So some of my more intricate DIY kits have laser etched lines to help you glue stuff on, which is great, but sometimes, it's nice to not have those, so you can kind of make your own arrangements, right? So here's one of the ways you can arrange the words, where you've got the bottom home here in the middle, but then I kind of offset my top home and suite. I know it looks backwards, obviously, to you guys, right? You could also have both the homes with the same offset, so you got home, seat, home, and then the green leaves in the middle here, right? You can even play around with a little home, sweet home. So they're kind of stair-stepped down. Let's see, that probably looks, right? So if you wanna do that, so there's a couple of different ways you can organize them, you know, lay them out, whatever kind of looks the most right in your eyes, that's what you're gonna go with. Um, I usually do this one, not that I've made a ton of these because this is a new sign for us, right? So, but I usually do that one, but now I'm questioning myself. Oh, I can move this first home more over to the middle too. But then that feels lopsided to the right because I've got like nothing over here but the sweets pushed over there. I also can just do them straight stacked on top of each other. The reason I don't like that one, I feel like the words are too close, right? Like you gotta get that S and that T like real close and I don't like that. I like to be able to look them look a little spread apart. So I think I'm gonna go with my gut which puts me doing it like Home, sweet home. I also like giving myself a little more room up here because I know I'm going to put a bow. I have somebody knocking at my door. Uh, her version of knocking is scratching though. We'll let Miss Savannah in. She doesn't want to miss the fun. Hello, princess. Come on, you can say hi. So we don't, we don't miss the fun. Here's little princess Savannah. Look at you, girl. You're so cute. You're so cute. This is my little bitty 12 pound princess dog here. <laughs> Wants to make sure she's not missing anything. All right, so this is the arrangement I'm gonna go with. Obviously, it's yours, so do what you want. But that's what I'm doing. Um, for these, for the words, 
You'll probably want to squeeze the glue out and use your remaining sponge, the skinny end, and put it on the back of the words. Unless you've caught, cut a small enough hole in the corner, like when you did the frame, that it's small enough that it's not going to put out a lot, right? Because you want to do just a really thin layer of glue. It helps if the bottle's open. Because <laughs> you definitely can um, run the risk of getting this over, like uh, squeezing out. So you'll want to put just a real thin layer. Um, if you're worried about the glue squeezing out the edges, definitely the easiest way is to put some glue out and then use the sponge and just put it on in a real thin layer. That's the safest way. We've been gluing stuff for a while, so I'm pretty comfortable with putting it on with the glue bottle. Also, if you're worried about getting it straight, I find that the easiest way is like to stand up and look over it and that gives me like a really good sense of is this straight or not. I mean, you've got the frame to help you. Plus the font is, you know, a little cursive, a little loopy. So like, it's a little forgiving in that sense. All right, we'll put a little more glue here on our sweet. All right, I feel like I got it a little bit thick over here. Let's smush that out. Wipe a little bit off. This is why we wear an apron. Our built-in napkin, just wipe it off. Perfect. Just give it a little push. And that glue just kind of suctions it right down. And push it up just a little. Savannah's just down on the floor, just watching me. Just wondering what the heck I'm doing. There we go. <clears throat> and then the last thing we're going to do, and now one with this, as thin as this is, I am definitely going to use the method with the sponge. So I am squeezing some glue out here. I don't know why I put that much glue. <laughs> I'm looking at it and go, what was I thinking? As I'm doing it, I'm like, that's ridiculous. So I'm just using the skinny end of the sponge here. And just like we dabbed the paint on the front, I'm just dabbing the glue on the back. And then you want to go back and spread it out because this definitely, I mean, you want glue everywhere because you want it to all be stuck down, but you want the layer of glue to be so thin that you almost don't see it. And if you do see it, right, it looks kind of thick in parts. So go back and dab that off and move it to other parts. They're making her little snorty noises. All right, I think I got it everywhere. You'll see it's just a real thin coat. And you can decide if you like it curving up slightly or if you like it curving down slightly. 
I think I like the curving up. It's very subtle, like it's not a big difference. And then I'm just going to try to put it in the middle left to right and in the middle of the home in the frame. Give it a little push down. Look at that, y'all. I just love doing this stuff. It's adorable. And we are almost done, but of course we have to make a bow for it. So set it over to the side. Grab out your ribbon. All right. So we're doing a very simple bow on this one. And all you need for it is your skinny twine. Your thicker twine is going to be for hanging it. We're going to tie it through the holes at the top. So this is what you're going to need. All right, so we're going to start out. This is the tail of the bow. And then we're going to pinch. This is going to be the center of the bow. Create a loop. Pinch. Create a second loop. Pinch. And then that's the other tail. And then that's the, actually the back of the bow because you don't want the tails coming you know, on the front. So flip it over. That's what our bow is going to look like. We will trim up the tails so they're even. Um, we'll put a cute little V in there, but make sure your loops are the same. So let me do that one more time. All right, this is a nice one piece of ribbon bow, right? So you start off with how long you want your tail to be and then pinch where you want your tail to end and the bow to start, right? Fold that around. So you've created a loop, pinch it in the same spot you were pinching the other one. All right, second loop, make it, you want it so that they're about the same length, right? And then pinch, so that it's all pinched there in the middle. This extra tail, you can kind of pull it down because it's wired, you're kind of able to mess with it. Right, so the thing you want to check before you tie it off is just make sure your loops are about the same length, right? So holding that with one hand, I'm going to wrap this around the middle where it's pinched. Just smoosh it down here. It's all wired, so we will fluff it back up in a minute. Do a little finger acrobatics there to tie that. All right, I give it one tie and I'm gonna check it again before I make it permanent with a double knot, right? Make sure I'm good with the um, loops. You can always pull one through a little bit if you need to, but once you're good with that, tighten it and second knot. And then you will need to grab out some scissors. It's obviously not included in the craft of the month. Also, decide how long you want your legs, uh, the tails, not your legs. Sorry, you're born with whatever size legs you get, people. You can't make them longer. Um, so I'm going to go hold this on my frame and see if I want to shorten them up at all. Right, it'll kind of depend. Just if it bothers you that it covers too much. You don't want to shorten them up too much because then it looks silly. The other option, too instead of shorter tails, is take the wired ribbon and pull it out so it's kind of more coming out, not straight down. And that will be really cute too. So I'm going to take a little bit of length off, but not a ton. So fold your tail in half sideways there, right? So the two wired edges are touching. And with your scissors from the wired edge, you're going to cut up so that you create a fabulous little V there. All right, then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, fold it over so my two wired edges are touching. And because I wanted to shorten it up, I'm doing it down here instead of up here. If you don't wanna shorten it up, obviously you're gonna do it closer to the end. So I'm going to cut 
down into the ribbon. A straight line there. Flip it open. There you go. There is our fabulously simple but beautiful bow, kind of like our sign, right? Let me put this thick jute on, right? So you're going to take your thick jute through the holes. Do a nice little double knot here. And the way I make sure my knots are solid is I pull the two ends here, but then I pull the looped pieces. If it pulls through, you obviously want to retie, right? So I pull both directions. And then we're going to tie the ribbon on in the same way. Right, I'm going to put each of my little pieces of twine here through the hole. doesn't want to go, you can always shove it through with the end of a paintbrush or tip of a pencil, that sort of thing. But mine went through. All right. And I'm just going to take these on the back. I'm just going to tie a simple double knot here to hold my ribbon on, my bow on. And then you can mess with this as much as you need to. Like I said, it's wired ribbon. So you can kind of pull it up, move it where you want to, fluff here, fluff there, whatever you want to do. Oh, look at that, y'all. I hope you are proud of yourself when you are done because you should be because it's adorable. Now you get to pick a place in your house to hang this. Please share a picture when you're done with yours. Tag me on Instagram, post it in the Facebook group where we are now, the DIY Divas group. I would just love to see it when you're done. It just makes me happy. It would make my St. Patty's Day, it would make my weekend. Even if you don't get it done till like, you know, July 2023 or something, post a picture. I don't care if you're out of date, if it took you a while to get it done, whatever. It makes me happy. I would love to see it. There's our fabulous home sweet home sign. I will let you know that these signs are a little bit heavier um, than, you know, like hanging a wreath or whatever, right? Because it's a solid piece here, and then we got the solid frame. So if you're hanging it on a command hook, you just want to get a command hook that's made um, for like at least three pounds. Um, and I always overdo it so I get the like command hooks with a higher weight than that. So. Over the door wreath hook works too. You don't have to worry about that popping off the door. If you do it in an over the door wreath hook, it's not going anywhere. So that works too. Hanging it on the wall, command hook, nail, those cool little drywall hooks that you just like poke through and it like magic, you know, any of those work great. But there is our craft kit of the month for March. Um, in just a sh few short days, I will be releasing the one for April. It's going to be a fun spring one. Um, but not a door hanger or a sign. It's gonna be like small, little fun, like our Valentine's ones here, right? It's gonna be some small fun. Oh, I'm pointing at it, it's off camera. <laughs> but like our small little fun signs that you can use anywhere, right? Kitchen counter, bathroom, entryway, even on a porch, right? It's got a cute little front porch set up. Um, so I'm gonna be doing some of those like spring ones. That'll be your next one. So stay tuned for the next couple days. I will post that. Also, next week, I'll be giving away free tickets to the Northwest Georgia Women's Expo in Cartersville. So um, pay attention for those, too. But that is it for today, DIY Divas. I love y'all. I appreciate you crafting with me. And I hope you have a fabulous weekend. Happy St. Patty's Day.